So on Saturday, I take Pete and Lillian and my lender come, right? I told, I called my lender up and I was like, hey, you know, I think we've got a good deal. You have to come out here. And he was like, yeah, I'll come out. And um, so it actually, he lived in Peachtree City, which is like an hour and a half drive. But he's like, no, I'll be there, you know, because he's like all into it anyways. And so he came up and then when we got, when we pulled into the storage facility, there was the, oh, the, I thought the owner, but there was like one man and then two women there. Right. And so I pulled in and we parked and we got out and we were like, Hey, how are you doing? You know, it's like, Oh, and then we all, they all introduced themselves to us. And it was the, it was the brother and the two sisters. Now, you know, when you pull up to a storage facility and like all three of them are there, like, you know, that something's about to go down. Right. And so, you know, they're, they're one in the cell. And so I told him, you know, and I give him a little bit of information. I said, look, we own like X amount of storage facilities. I can't remember how we own, how many we owned at that time. But I was like, we own X amount of storage facilities and we want to pick up some more. And we just moved to this area. So we're like, this is the perfect facility for us. And he was like, yeah, let's meet, let's do it. And so uh, we, we talked to these people for like two hours and he gave us the whole history of his, their lives. They've been in ball ground for like, you know, forever since they were kids. That's where they grew up, you know, born right around the corner. And they all, he also had land he wanted to see, he wanted some land. I got some land too. And like, you know, and I said, great. And he told me it's 76 units. It's 7,600 square feet. They're all 10 by 10 units and they're all full and nobody's paying. That's what he said. And he's like, and we gave up on this property like three years ago. And so we have like maybe one or two people that pay randomly and stuff. And we never, ever do auctions. We don't want to deal with it. Like it is honestly just a waste of like time and energy for us. We've got other things that we're doing. And um, I was like, well, I'm the, perf I'm the perfect person to buy this. Like you have to, you have to give this to us. And I said, so I was like, look, I get that, you know, you, I get it. I get that it costs money for y'all to build this and stuff, but like, this is my proposal to y'all. So, and you know, and I like what I did mentally, I didn't even run the numbers or anything. I mentally, I was just thinking like 7,600, sorry, 76 doors. And we could probably like the market, like I, you know, I looked at, before I came, I looked at the market and at that time, which was like three years ago, um, you know, like, like 10 by 10s were going for $60, okay, each. So I just basically, that's what I did is I just multiplied uh, 76 times um, uh, 60. And I just knew that I was going to make $4,500 a month. All right. I just knew that. And then I knew that the, my lender was going to charge me like 8%. Interest. He charges me 8% interest. Okay. And so I knew that whatever the amount of money that I got, whatever, like whatever I got the property for, I would pay 8% interest on. Okay. And then I would have that as the mortgage. And then the way that I, the way that I typically do it when I borrow money is I'll just borrow like whatever amount of money that I need is hundred percent. And then I'll be the one that comes out of pocket for anything else. So this, obviously we know that when you buy a facility like this, an abandoned facility, like every month, you're going to have to come out of pocket. So you have to think about this, like, because, because first of all, there's no bank that's going to lend you money on this deal. There's no bank that's going to lend any money. So you have to have either your own cash or a private money lender. And you're going to know that it's going to cost you money to get this thing up and running. Okay. And so how much money are you willing to come out of pocket? Like, what is your risk level or how much money can you afford? Or, you know, you just have to mentally think about that. And so for me, like, you know, we'll come out of pocket, you know, I'll come out of pocket. If I know it's going to be a good deal on the back end, I'll come out of pocket. Right. But um, so, but, you know, I wanted to make sure that we at least could afford to pay the mortgage. Right. So the more I was like, how much could I pay for the mortgage? A thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand. What do I want? I was like, yeah, I could probably come out maybe a thousand dollars, maybe fifteen hundred dollars a month would be fine out of pocket. And then I'll, you know, I'll pay the mortgage and then whatever it takes for us to get this, this, this facility stabilized, we'll pay that as well, too. Right. So I just want to, I just always want to make sure that I have enough money to pay the lender. 
right? And then however long it takes us to come up with the money to get it stabilized, then, you know, we know we have to come out of pocket for that, okay? So in the end, like what I offered them was $150,000, right? And I said, look, and it was right, like it was right before Thanksgiving. And I'm gonna tell you the last quarter of the year is the best quarter to get facilities under contract because owners want to sell by the end of the year and especially right before Thanksgiving. So this time right now is the best time to be talking to owners. Every year I put, a, I put, I put several facilities under contract right around now. I just put two in with under contract today and, um, and, uh, and uh, we'll most likely put more under contract as well too. So and we'll close those before the end of the year. 